Vicious atmosphere is created with that. There is an additional meaning also. Lord Krishna says in the Gita, Aksharanam Akarosmi. Among the various letters of the alphabet, I am Akara, the very first letter of the alphabet. Without the help of the fundamental sound A, no other sound can be uttered by our vocal system. So, it is but natural that A is considered as the fundamental sound from which every other sound has come. And therefore, Lord Krishna says, among the letters of the alphabet, I am Akara. Now, the word Atha contains A in the beginning. Since it contains the letter A in the beginning, which is identified with God himself, and since the word Atha is supposed to have come out of the mouth of Chaturmukha Brahma, it is very, very auspicious. Therefore, it is but me that this Upanishad is starting with such an auspicious and holy word. Atha is also used when a question is asked. In English, suppose somebody puts a question and we start the answer. Well, we say something like that. But here, the third meaning that it is in answer to a question raised by a disciple doesn't hold good. So we can take it in the first two senses that it indicates the beginning of a new work, a new science, a new knowledge and also that it indicates auspiciousness. Then comes the second word purushaha atha purusho havai narayana akamayata and so on. The word purusha has been used in our vernacular various Indian languages to indicate man, purusha, stri, man and woman. But in philosophical literature, purusha is used specially for the Atman, especially for God. It is used more as a technical word. The body is called as pura. Pura means city. Navadvare pure dehi, Krishna says in the Gita. This is a city of nine gates and the Atman lives in this city. Pure shete iti purushaha. One who lives or sleeps inside this city or body is called as a purusha. Puram shariram tasmin shete iti purushaha. Pura means the body and one who lives in the body is purusha. So it can be the Jivatman, it can be the Paramatman also because ultimately behind the Jivatman is the Paramatman principle. Navadvaram punam punyam etair bhavais samanvitam vyapyashete mahatmayas tasma purusha ucchati Bhishma says in the Chantiparva that this is a holy city. We should never consider this body as having its origin in sin, opposite the Christian belief. We don't consider that it is sinful. The body is something punya, sacred, holy. Why? For two reasons. Firstly, because the Lord lives here. And the house of God can never be impure. Secondly, this is the instrument given to us by God in order to realize Him. Without a body, how can we do sadhana? See, the whole concept is so wonderful. So this Navadvara Pura is Punya, it is holy. And one who sleeps inside, stays inside, lives inside, he is Purusha. There are other definitions also given by the commentators. Puruni Khalani Sanoti Dadati Iti Purusha. Now we are all human beings, we have a number of desires. Purushaha Kratubayaha, the Veda says in one place, a Purusha, a human being, is full of Kratu. I want this, I want that, I will do this, I will do that, full of desires. Naturally, the desires impel us to act. In order to get what we want, 
are in order to get rid of what we don't want in life, karma. But very often we find that human efforts have a limitation. We come to the dead end of the road as it were, then we realize and pray to the higher power to come to our rescue. So if we pray sincerely and seriously with faith, with love, with devotion, God will definitely respond. That is what the commentator is telling us here. Puruni phalani sanoti dadati iti. One who gives us the various fruits which we desire for, which we ask for, he is purusha. Puru means desire, sa means give. One who gives or one who fulfills our desires by giving us what we want. Puruni, Bhuvanani, Samhara Samaye, Syati, Antam Karoti Iti. Another beautiful meaning. According to us, the process of creation is not linear, it is cyclic. Srishti, Sthiti, Pralaya. Again, Srishti, Sthiti, Pralaya. It is going on eternally. It is Anadi and Ananta. So the world has been created and it is maintained by the Lord for some time. Once the cyclic process is over or when the time comes, the Srishti has served its purpose, Samhara comes. Samhara literally means destruction, but really it is Upasamhara withdrawing the whole universe into himself. As the Upanishads put it elsewhere, the Lord has projected them, the universe outside of himself, and again he draws it back into himself, just like the spider for instance. So Upasamhara, withdrawing the world back, world back into oneself, or destroying it in the ordinary sense, one who does that is called Purusha, Puruni Bhuvanani. Puru means the various worlds, the fourteen worlds which have been created by Chaturmukha Brahma, for instance. Samhara Samaye, at the time of dissolution, withdrawal, Syati Antam Karati, he puts an end to them. So he is called as Purusha because he destroys the creation at the end of the cycle of creation. That means the whole system is withdrawn and the various jivatmas who have not yet obtained mukti or moksha, they live in the body of the Lord, sleeping as it were, in an uh, unmanifest state, and in the next cycle of creation, they are given one more chance to come up, to come out, and evolve themselves, and reach the highest goal of their life. Puranadva, Sadhanadva Purushaha. This is the fourth meaning. One who is filling the whole universe with himself. One who lives everywhere in the universe. He is Purusha. Purana. Filling up. In fact, the Taitiri Upanishad says that the Lord created this world and then entered into it. Tat Srishtva Tadeva Anupravishat. So one who has entered into every bit of the item of creation, one who is filling the universe from within and without, and one who is living there inside it, establishing himself inside that, he is Purusha. So ultimately, all these definitions are possible because Purusha represents the Supreme God. Atha Purusha O Hawaii, Purusha the Supreme Lord, who is living inside the body as the Jivatman and behind him as the Paramatman, who is filling the whole universe, sustaining it, and who is destroying the universe at the end of a cycle of creation, and who as the personal God, Sakala Saguna Brahman, responds to our prayers and gives us what we want, he is called as Purusha. Sometimes he is also called as Parama Purusha. Purusha Sukta. The whole Sukta 
डिपेंड्स अपॉन और डिस्क्राइब से परम पुरुष द सुप्रीम बी द लॉर्ड यूज द वर्ड इन द गीता पुरुष इज द इंडिविजुअल सोल पुरुषोत्तम इज द सुप्रीम सोल नेक्स्ट कम्स द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट वर्ड विथ विच दिस यूनिवर्स दिस उपनिषद इज कंसर्न नारायण अथ पुरुषो हई नारायण आपो नारा मोनुस्मृति से नारा मीन्स द वाटर्स अयन तेन नारायण स्मृत बिकॉज दि वाटर्स आर् हिज अबोट हिईज लिविंग इन द वाटर देर फोर ही इज कॉल एस नारायण क्षीर सागर शयन क्षीर सागर कैन बी ओशन ऑफ मिल ओशन ऑफ वाटर द लॉर्ड इज स्लीपिंग देर ऑन दि आदिशेष दिस इज हाउ दि पुराणा डिस्क्राइब इट दि वाटर्स आर् दि काजल वाटर्स the water is the original fundamental substance from which the whole universe came into being in course of time and the lord is sleeping over that presiding over that controlling it so he is called as narayana nara means water ayana means abode one whose abode is water naraha atma tato jatani akashadini narani karyani tani ayam कारणात्मना व्याप्नोति अतः तानि अयनम अस्य इति नारायण दिस इज ए सेकंड डेफिनेशन नर मीन्स द आत्म फ्रॉम द आत्म ऑल दि भूता एलिमेंट्स हैव कम आकाश वायु अग्नि एंड सोहन पंचभूता एंड देन बाय ए परमिटेशन एंड कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ द पंचभूता all the objects of the world have been created that is how the upanishads describe it tasmad dvaye tasmad atmanah akasha sambhutah akasha dvayu vayo ragnihi agne rapah adya prithivi no the various objects created from the atman starting with the akasha tatva they are called as narani that which has come from nara is nara nara is the atman nara or the various items of creation in the created world which have originated from the atman but even after creating these various objects atman doesn't sit quiet he enters into them enlivens them from inside supports them from inside so in a secondary sense these objects of creation become his ayana or abode so nara is atman nara means the various items of creation the various items of creation become his ayana or abode because he lives in them so he is called as narayan that means the supreme cosmic being the all pervading cosmic being who is both transcendent and immanent who is outside as well as inside yet taking chi jagat sarvam drishyate shruyate piva we have already studied the sentence in the narayana sukta whatever world is seen here whatever world world is heard of that is something which is existing as swargaloka all that is he narayana himself the third meaning is naranam jeevanam ayanatvat pralaye itiva narayana and pralaya takes place when the created world is dissolved by the supreme lord by his supreme will the jeevatmas which have not yet attained liberation they go back to him live in him they rest in him pralaya nidra it is called chaturmukha brahma creates the world and during his day time and during his night time when he sleeps the whole universe is withdrawn into himself we have very interesting descriptions in the puranas 
So the jivas which have not obtained liberation, they are still there in the state of bondage. They go back to the Lord, live in Him. So naranam jivanam ayanatvat pralaye at the time of pralaya or dissolution. Nara are human beings, the various living beings. They make Him their abode. They live in Him. So He is called as Narayana. Yat prayanti abhisam vishanti. Taitri Upanishad, the third chapter, contains a beautiful discourse. Bhrugurvai varunihi varunam pitaram upasasara adhihi bhagavo brahmeti. Taitri Upanishad is very nice to chant also. Bhrugurvai varunihi varunam pitaram upasasara adhihi bhagavo brahmeti tagam ho vacha. Then Varuna says, the father, Bhrugu is the son, Varuni, son of Varuna. He asks, please teach me about Brahman. What is that Brahman? Then the father gives a hint, that from which the whole universe has come, that in which the whole universe lives after creation, and that to which the whole universe returns at the end of a cycle of creation, that is Brahman. Then Prabhu goes and starts meditating and so on. So yat prayanti abhisam vishanti. So they enter into this. That is why he is called as Narayana. The whole created universe, the living beings in the created universe, at the end of a cycle of creation, they enter into him and live in him. Naras, human beings, living beings, they make him ayana, support, so he is called as Narayana. In whichever way we put it, we come back to the fundamental principle, Supreme God. The Vishnu Sahasranama, in which all these names appear, Vishnu, Narayana, Narayana is a very important name which comes there. And it has two well-known commentaries. One is that of Shankara, which is very popular, quite common, and that is the earliest commentary we can we get. The second commentary is by Parashara Bhatta, who is a disciple of Ramanuja. And he has dealt with the various names in detail, trying to give the etymological definitions, deriving the names from the root verbs. The great Pandit, very scholarly exposition and we have published the book from here during revered Adhyavanji's time. But Parashar Bhatta is very orthodox. When it comes to this Narayana, word Narayana, he says it is a Rahasya Naam. It is a very, very sacred syllable, so I won't explain it, he says. It cannot be explained in public. We cannot write commentaries upon a sacred and a secret syllable like that. It has to be got through Guru, Guru Mukha. So, Prajaha Srijeya Iti Akamayata Atha. Now we begin a new topic. Purushaha Narayanaha, the Supreme Lord Narayana. What did he do? Akamayata. He desired. What did he desire? Prajaha Srijeya. Let me create living beings. Now such statements of Brahman or Atman or God or Sadvastu desiring to create the world and engaging itself in the process of creation such statements are found in the Upanishads in a number of places. Sadeva Somyedamagra Asit Yekamevadviti Yam Saikshata and so on. Chandogya Upanishad. In the beginning, before creation, only the Sadvastu existed and it desired Bahusyam Prajaye Yeti and so on. Let me become many. Tadaikshata Bahusyam Prajaye Iti Chandogya. When we come to Taitri Upanishad, 
ಆತ್ಮನ್ ಸೋ ಕಾಮಯತ ಸೋ ಕಾಮಯತ ಬಹುಸ್ಯಾಂ ಪ್ರಜಾ ಹೇಯೇತಿ ಸತಪೋತಪ್ಯತ ಸತಪಸ್ತಪ್ತಗಂ ಸರ್ವಸೃಜತ ಯಜಿದಂ ಕಿಂಚ ತತ್ಸೃಷ್ಟ ತದೇವಾನುಪ್ರಾವಿಶತ್ ಸೋ ಕಾಮಯತ ಈ ಡಿಸೈರ್ ಬಹುಸ್ಯಾಂ ಪ್ರಜಾ ಇತಿ ಲೆಟ್ ಮಿ ಬಿಕಮ್ ಮೆನಿ ದೆನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಡಿಡ್ ಯು ಡೂ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ನೌ ಪರಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ಸದ್ವಸ್ತು ಪರಮಾತ್ಮನ್ ಗಾಡ್ ದ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟರ್ ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಟ್ ಡಿಸೈರ್ ಟು ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸ್ ಹೀ ಡಿಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ವಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಪ್ರೋಸೆಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಷನ್ ಹೀ ಡಿ ತಪಸ್ ಸತಪೋತಪ್ಯತ ಶಂಕರ ಸೇಸ್ ಈವನ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ಹ್ಯಾ ಟು ಡೂ ತಪಸ್ ಇನ್ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಟು ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟ್ ದಿ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಅಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಲೆಸನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅಸ್ whenever we want to undertake a very important work in our life something which is difficult to attain difficult to achieve difficult to do we should prepare ourselves for it swami ji says in one place are you prepared to pay the price it's not that easy so we have to prepare ourselves for the supreme task whatever it be and that means tapas swami vivekananda sat on the kanyakumari rock for 3 days and 3 nights to find out the mission of his life shri ramakrishna did a lot of tapas then he discovered the mission of his life and other souls vishwamitra did tapas to discover gayatri so tapas hard austerity severe spiritual discipline is very necessary before we undertake any great task in life great things can be done by great sacrifices only says swami vivekananda and tapas is one of the greatest sacrifices tapas means you have to give up so many things in life you take a veena player or a musician or a sculptor how much of tapas goes into the final product before a person becomes an excellent veena player like venkati giriyappa or uh, others veena sambhasiva yar and so on if you look into their lives we find that they had practiced 68 hours a day for 20 years 30 years getting up at 2 o'clock in the night and practicing tapas without tapas no vidya can be achieved so if even brahman had to do tapas to create the world what about us ಸತಪಸ್ತತ್ವ ಪ್ರಜಾಹ್ರಿಯೇಯ ಇತಿ ಅಕಾಮಯತ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ ಸೇಫ್ಲಿ ಕನ್ಕ್ಲೂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಹಿ ಡಿಸೈರ್ ಟು ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟ್ ದ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ಸ್ ದ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ಸ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ದಿ ಲೈನ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ ಸೇ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಡಿಕ್ ತಪಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ದಿ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಅಕಾಮಯತ ದಟ್ ಹಿ ಡಿಸೈರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ತಪಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಇಂಟರ್ಪ್ರಿಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಎ ಸ್ಲೈಟ್ಲಿ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ವೇ from what we normally understand in his case desire not is not desire in the sense that we have desires desire is just a thought that comes to him a sankalpa that is enough tapas also just he makes up his mind and that is enough we have to work hard in the case of the lord sankalpa is both desire and tapas ಅಥ ಪುರುಷೋ ಹವೈ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಅಕಾಮಯತ ಪ್ರಜಾ ಸೃಜೇಯ ಇತಿ ದೆನ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರೋಸೆಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ಡ್ ಇನ್